Yo, my BS gang, if you are in the field of applied behavior analysis, I highly suggest that you stick around for today's video as we are going over the process of conducting a functional assessment. However, it is a bit different than the one conducted in a typical ABA setting. If you are in the business, you've probably heard of this process as performance diagnostics. For those that do not know me, I am Troy Berg. I am an international behavior therapist and organizational behavior management specialist. You can find me posting YouTube videos twice a week and you can also tune in daily as I post YouTube shorts every single day. If if you happen to be on the other socials, do not worry because I post different content across all the different socials. You can find me on Instagram at Behavioral Stories. You can find me on TikTok at Behavioral Stories. And if you're into discussions and blogs, you can type in Troy Berg on LinkedIn to see me write about various things. For my content creators out there, if you are looking to gain a competitive edge with a convenient tool, head over to the comment section and click on the YouTube Buddy Chrome extension link. You can click on that link or use code Troy to gain a large discount to a Chrome built-in research tool that is sure to boost your performance. Now, with all that said, let's jump into today's video on conducting a functional assessment before your business intervention. Remember guys, the only thing standing between you and your goal is the BS story you keep telling yourself as to why you can't achieve it. In the next set of videos, I will be making a video regarding the literature on behavioral systems analysis. However, today we're going over the process of how it is actually applied. So according to King and Kieran, 2021, BSA, AKA behavioral systems analysis, involves the application of behavior analysis and systems analysis to analyze and improve the performance of an organization. So as an OBM specialist, you use BSA to conduct a performance assessment. You do this across three differing system levels, starting at the organizational level, working your way down to the individual or performer level. Take a look at this chart here provided by King and Kieran 2021. The performance diagnostics is conducted across all three levels. All three levels make up an organizational system. So the functional assessment begins at the organizational level. Here's where you get to know the company by assessing the organization's current goals, strategies, structure, and of course the key metrics. Then you move to the second system or level of the organization. Remember, for each level you are answering what is being assessed. Performance in one area of an organization affects performance in other areas of that same organization. The second level is the process level. In this system, we are assessing the organization's current processes and key performers that influence the business opportunity metrics, which I made a lovely video on earlier this week, so I highly suggest you go check that out. Like I said earlier, you make your way down to the performer level or individual level. Again, what is being assessed, the antecedents and consequences, aka the A's and C's, influencing the key performer's targeted behavior. The performer level is where the intervention gets even deeper. King and Kieran 2021 go into detail by writing another term for performance diagnostics on the performer level is functional assessment. And this is because you are assessing the function and example contingencies of the current performance. This is when you will be applying what you know about the science of behavior to learn and understand why people are performing the way they are at work. And there is how you determine organizational change. So with that said, King and Kieran 2021 wrote that if the pinpointed behaviors are not occurring consistently or correctly today, then one of these four issues is occurring. Number one, a lack of antecedents that prompt the pinpointed behavior. Number two, a lack of consequences that support the pinpointed behavior. Number three, antecedents that are prompting other behaviors which conflict with the pinpointed behaviors. Number four, consequences that are reinforcing those other behaviors. Basically, we need to take a look at the three-term contingency. A, antecedent, what happened before, B, the behavior, trying to put ourselves in the performer's shoes to try and understand why this behavior is happening, and then C, the consequence, what happened after. There are two different methods of going about obtaining this information. The first is the descriptive method. An OBM specialist can do this directly by observing the employees in the environment where the pinpointed behaviors should be occurring. This method allows an OBM specialist to gather information about why the pinpointed behaviors are not occurring and maybe why other behaviors are occurring instead. The other method of going about the assessment is indirect. Here's where an OBM specialist can interview supervisors, employees, etc., to gather information about why the pinpointed behaviors are not occurring and maybe why other behaviors are occurring instead. This method is actually called the informant or interview method of assessment. Bailey and Piles, 1989, called it ABC recording and described it as providing data on stimuli that are present immediately 
prior to and after a behavior occurs. Daniels 1989 called it ABC analysis. Daniels put that it is asking a manager, supervisor, or employee about the conditions, aka the antecedents and consequences, under which the problem occurs. With that said, let's take a look at the four contingencies for the performer level again provided by King and Kieran 2021. Number one, the antecedents for the pinpointed behaviors. We need to ask ourselves what antecedents should be in place to prompt the pinpointed behaviors. For example, written expectations or clear goals. Number two, consequences for the pinpointed behaviors. We need to ask ourselves what consequences should be in place to positively reinforce the pinpointed behaviors. For example, occasional performance feedback from supervisors. Number three, antecedents for the current behaviors. We got to ask ourselves, what is currently happening instead of the pinpointed behaviors, as well as what antecedents are prompting the current or wrong behaviors. Number four, consequences for the current behaviors. We need to ask here, what is currently happening instead of the pinpointed behaviors, as well as what consequences are reinforcing the current or wrong behaviors. So that's why you can catch me next time. Cause you gotta generalize, maintain, and create a model with long lasting sustainability and one that's open to change. So at the end of the day, you wanna drive results? And you're looking to get paid? You gotta do what's right to get that bag.